I always thought I knew why the front of high-speed trains are so long, but it turns out this weird design goes much deeper than I thought. On the world's fastest train, the L0 series SC Maglev, in Japan, this unusual front is particularly noticeable, stretching out 15 meters or 49 feet. But this long nose has been inherited from generations of high-speed trains before it. So what is the reason for this bizarre looking design? To understand this, we need to go back to the early days of high-speed rail. In 1964, Japan's Shikansen line connecting Tokyo and Osaka was opened in advance of the 1964 Summer Olympics. Despite an initial estimated cost of just over a billion US dollars, this ended up costing just shy of three billion. The high-speed train that operated on this line was quickly called the bullet train due to its speed and shape. This shape was indeed designed to mimic a bullet due to its great aerodynamic performance that allowed the train to bash through all of the stationary air particles. This train was praised across the world, but as the train got quicker, a serious problem became clear that could have halted Japan's $3 billion train line in its tracks. The train was causing the windows of houses near the train line to rattle and even crack. Now, trains can cause a lot of noise as the wheels shake and rattle along the track. Although this type of noise could be annoying, it wasn't the type of noise causing problems for the Shinkansen line. And even if it was, it definitely wouldn't have been helped by a weirdly shaped nose. Also, this rattling noise is not even a problem for the world's fastest train, because it levitates above the track once it reaches 150 km an hour or 93 miles an hour, making it significantly quieter. This minimum speed is required because the interaction between the magnets on the train and coils in the train tracks is what creates the lift. And the amount of lift that this interaction generates increases as the train goes faster due to Faraday's law of induction. Once the required speed is met, the train then elegantly glides 10 centimeters or four inches off of the ground, eliminating rolling friction to allow increasingly high speeds. So if rattling noise from the train tracks isn't the problem, what is causing the problematic noise? But before we listen to that noise, I need to tell you about the free mobile browser Opera who made this video possible. Say I wanted to know who designed the first commercial maglev train. Instead of wasting my time scrolling through Google to find the right answer, I can now use Opera's free inbuilt AI assistant Aria to help me out. After asking the question, Aria provides instant answers with clickable links where I can find out more. Turns out it was Eric Lathwaite. Opera also comes with a built-in ad and tracker blocker and a VPN for enhanced privacy and security, making it easier and safer to search the web than ever before. With Opera, I'm also able to add a personalized wallpaper and customize my newsfeed so I only see topics I want to see. I've just gone with Opera as my go-to browser, so you might want to give it a shot too. Download it on Google Play or by clicking the downloadable link in the description. You can also scan this QR code to get the browser instantly on your phone. Okay, but what about that problematic noise I mentioned earlier? Well, take a listen to it for yourself in a video by the channel wonderfully named Train Fart. This sounds like an explosion and is what was really causing problems for people and property near the high-speed train track. This happens due to something called the piston effect. The piston effect happens because as a train moves through a tunnel, it acts like a piston, pushing the air in front of it. This causes a pressure wave to flow through the tunnel and create what is known as micro pressure waves at the tunnel's exit. This micro pressure wave is what makes that explosion sound we heard earlier, and is particularly bad in Japan due to their narrower train tunnels. Nowadays, to solve a problem like this, we can run huge computer simulations to see exactly what is happening to the air inside a tunnel and how it changes with different designs. However, in 1989, when this was becoming a big issue for Japan's Shikansen line, this wasn't possible. Thankfully, the general manager, Eiji Nakatsu, had an idea. After watching kingfishers dive into water during his birdwatching trips, he was struck by the realization that Mother Nature had already solved this engineering challenge. The long beak of the kingfisher reduced the intensity of the pressure wave it felt as it entered the water and reduced the splash. Therefore, by extending the nose of the high-speed trains, 
it would also be possible to reduce the intensity of the micro pressure waves and prevent the large explosion sounds. This was first tested by shooting different shaped bullets down a tube and seeing how it sounded before being implemented onto full-size trains. Birds having a long nose for entering into water makes a lot of sense if you've ever dived into water yourself. Doing a belly flop feels like a slap in the stomach as the water hits you, whereas diving in straight with your arms out in front is much less painful, provided you don't mess it up on the way down. This is largely because when you belly flop, you slow down very quickly, causing a rapid deceleration. Because force is mass times acceleration, this results in a large force that slaps you in the stomach. Although the long noses of the high-speed trains don't make a big difference to the deceleration of the train as it enters the tunnel, it does spread out the compressive force over a longer period of time, meaning that the maximum pressure in the tunnel at any point is lower, reducing the micro pressure waves. The resemblance between the Kingfisher's nose and the 700 series Kansan high-speed train from 1997 is extremely clear, and meant the new high-speed trains could reach speeds of 285 km an hour or 177 miles an hour without causing unbearably loud sounds from the tunnels. This new design also had the added benefit of slightly reducing the overall aerodynamic drag of the train compared to the bullet-shaped design. I always thought that this reduction in drag was the main reason for this weird shaped nose, but it turns out it's not actually all that important. One study found that the significance of nose and tail pressure reduction is low over a large variety of slender shapes as long as there are no sharp edges. In reality, the added length takes up space that could have been used for paying passengers, so the slight aerodynamic savings wouldn't have made financial sense. The design of the train's nose is one of the cheapest ways to reduce the micro pressure waves. However, it isn't the only way. With all this talk of explosion sounds and bullet trains, you may have already been thinking about guns and specifically how the idea of silencers or suppressors could be applied to the tunnels that the trains are going through. Suppressors contain a series of internal chambers and baffles. When attached to the muzzle of a gun, these chambers give the rapidly expanding gases a larger, controlled space in which to expand and cool before they exit out of the end. For the Shinkansen tunnels, side branches have been added to help pressure waves reduce as they pass through the tunnels. However, the largest change was the addition of tunnel hoods at the entrances of 175 tunnels. These reduce the explosive sounds at the exit of the tunnel by reducing the compressive pressure wave that enters them. This works slightly differently to how the long nose reduces the pressure wave, but the principles are similar. The entrance tunnel creates an intermediate space between the open environment and the main tunnel. When the train approaches, the air in front of it begins to compress in the entrance tunnel first. This allows for a more gradual compression and expansion of air rather than a sudden and sharp compression if the train entered directly into the main tunnel. The entrance tunnel therefore acts as a buffer zone where pressure waves can spread out and dissipate before they reach the main tunnel, which is helped by the vents on the sides and top that can be actively or passively controlled. So that is why the world's fastest train looks so weird and how it was inspired by nature. As you're still watching, please like and subscribe as I think you'll like some of the other videos that I make, like this one on a turbine that works without any blades. And don't forget to check out Opera in the description down below.